So I have a good friend and her birthday is coming up on October 17th, 2021. And I want to quickly figure out how to calculate what day of the week that would be. I can use the weekday function just like this. And we'll use the dated if function to determine their age like this. So stick with me to the end of this video. We're gonna learn how to use these formulas along with the now function, the today function, the weekday function, and the workday function. So dates in Excel are a little bit mysterious. They're not exactly what they seem. They're a little bit like Miss Minutes from the Loki series. In that they aren't exactly what they seem. So this looks like the correct date here. This is in date format, but what this really is is a serial number that Excel has tracked based on how much time has elapsed since the date January 1st, 1900. So so that date, January 1st, 1900, is really the first date that Excel starts recording from. And as a serial number, that would just be the number one. And anything that has elapsed since then uh, will be shown as a serial number. So let me demonstrate. If I change this date format to a number format, it shows us that roughly 44,000 days, 447,417 44, days have elapsed since that first date. So by using the formulas in this square here, we know that the current month is the eighth month, August. The current day is the 9th of August. We know that the current year is 2021. The current hour, well, it's 16, which is uh, 4 p.m. in 24 hour time, uh, 41 minutes and 49 seconds. And by the end of this video, I'll show you how you can update that. Now we'll explain the difference between the now and today functions. So the now function looks like this. I'll type in this cell now open parentheses, close parentheses, press enter. And it gives us not only the date, but the, uh, the system time on my computer. And then the today function will look like this with only the date. So if you just want to display the date, use the today function. If you want the time along with the date, you can use the now function. If you want to time jump 30 days into the future and see what day that would be, we could use the today function and then just add 30 days from that. So you would type that like this, equal today, open and close parentheses, and then just add a plus 30. And now that'll tell you that uh, September 8th, 2021 is 30 days from now. If you wanna jump 45 days prior to today, you could just do something similar and type today and then minus 45 and you would get the date 45 days ago. Before we use the weekday function in this activity, let's jump over to a fun activity to use the weekday function to calculate what day of the week the apocalypse would happen in the Loki TV show. So in the Loki series, they have to jump around time to locate this Loki variant person who's been causing them a lot of trouble. And one of the times that they jump to is the future in time around hurricane season around the year 2050 in Alabama. So we're going to help the TVA agents out by trying to uh, pick what day of the week that would be. So maybe it would alter their game plan if it was like on a Friday or a Sunday, that kind of thing. And just like the last example, to get today's date, you would just type equal today, open and close parentheses, press enter, and then you've got today's date. And now we'll predict the weekday that that apocalypse will happen, the one we're gonna have to jump to. So using the equal weekday function, we can reference the date here. So we'll reference this date. And then if I press comma, and then it asks me sort of how, how do you wanna organize your week? And typically, um, just like this table here, you see one is a Sunday, and then all the other dates follow after that for the seven days of the week. So number one would be uh, Sunday. So if we click this option or just press one, that's sort of the default option when it comes to um, the weekday function in Excel. If you wanna change it, you can use the other numbers, but we'll stick with this one and we'll press enter. The only problem is it says two and not everyone's gonna know that two stands for Monday. I mean, we have the chart, the index chart here or the index table here, but if you wanna change this, you can use a formatting, a custom formatting option in the numbers group on your home tab. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do more number formats. We're gonna go to custom and then just uh, search for um, day formatting. So you say D four times, that's the one we want. And then it changes it to the exact day of the week. Let's talk about the weekday function and how you can use it. So if we look at this area right here, we know that the number one corresponds to Sunday. So the weekday function will kind of spit out this number and that will correspond to the dates, but not many people know that. So I'm gonna show you a little formatting hack that will easily allow you to display days of the week. So in this example, maybe we'll want to uh, 
uh, display the days of the week for these dates, but we don't want to have to sort of manually look them up. So we're just going to type in weekday, open parentheses, and then get this first value, click on it, close the parentheses, press enter, and we see the number five, so that would tell us it's a Thursday. And we'll just copy this down for the other dates. Now, if you're working with people who don't have no idea what those numbers actually represent, you might want to do something like this. So we have to use a custom number format. So I'll go to more number formats here and then choose the custom one. The one we want is called day times four. So it's D, 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 D to show the long version of Thursday or the whatever day of the week it is. So press OK. And then you can sort of combine that with the weekday function to actually display the real names of the days of the week. I'm going to show you the workday function. So this is going to help us see when the project that we started is complete or what day it should be completed on. Let's say we're writing the next part of the Loki series season two. So we, it's going to take us about 120 days if we start on September 30th of this year. Let's use the workday function to see uh, when it should be completed by. So to do that, we type in the equal workday function, and it's right here. Now it needs three things. It needs the start date, which we have here. It needs about how many days the job would take. So we'll separate that with a comma and then days, and then any holidays in between where people aren't working. So we don't count those days and we just kind of skip them. So for the next part, we'll do a comma and then highlight this range here. There's two holidays, Thanksgiving and Christmas, and then we will close the function with that parentheses. Press enter and uh, the job should be complete on March 18, 2022. So maybe that's when the next season will come out. Okay, so here's a different variation on the workday function that I've kind of discovered. And it's basically if you want to include weekend days, so you're not gonna count the weekend days, but what happens when your weekend days are not Saturdays and Sundays? Something happens in downtown Toronto where people get paid on a Thursday night and I think they call in sick on Fridays and probably take the day off work on Saturdays, but maybe they work Sundays instead. So let's, for our Toronto people, let's include a Fridays and Saturdays off. I don't know what happens. Thursday nights are just jam packed in downtown Toronto. Now that things are reopening, I think it's because in Ontario, people get paid on Thursdays. So they go out, have a good time on Thursday nights, probably call in sick on Friday, uh, make up the difference on Sunday. So maybe their weekends are Friday, and Saturday, not Saturdays and Sundays like typical people, but this is how you would uh, use that new schedule in your to calculate work days in between when the job was started, when the job was finished. So to do that, you would type in equal workday, and then it's actually network day. I don't know why, I got this from a textbook, I screenshotted this one. I actually prefer to work with network days, this one, and then Put in the start date it's just a lot easier and more flexible i think than the work days and then uh, put in the end date here and then you could include holidays if you wanted but this is a shorter time period so there might not be as many holidays in between and here once i put a comma to separate the end date you could choose your typical saturday sunday by putting a one but like i said people in toronto seem to party hard on thursday nights and have friday and saturday off work so that could be like the new weekend thing i don't know if that's a new trend going on but that would be the number seven so anytime the formula sees friday and saturdays no you're not going to be there you're going to call in sick um, you would just close the parentheses now press enter and then we can copy this down and calculate the amount of work days in between these two dates so speaking about time, let's next week my students will be competing their Excel MOS exams and we'll find out if 70% of each class could meet the passing rate of 70% or greater. And the deal was if one of them does, then I'll break dance for one minute. And if two of them reach that mark, then I'll have to break dance for three minutes. And if all of them reach that mark, I'll have to dance for five minutes or more. So join us next week. We're going to tally up the marks and see uh, how long I'm going to have to break dance for. <laughs> All right, see you then. Bye.